The last time that I broadcast a message was at Halifax, Nova Scotia, when I said a few words of farewell to all the women and children who had welcomed the King and myself so kindly during our visits to Canada and the United States of America. The world was then at peace, and for seven happy weeks we had moved in an atmosphere of such goodwill and human kindliness that the very idea of strife and bloodshed seemed impossible. The recollection of it still warms my heart and gives me courage. I speak today in circumstances sadly different. For 20 years, we have kept this day of remembrance as one consecrated to the memory of past and never to be forgotten sacrifice. And now the peace which that sacrifice made possible has been broken. And once again, we have been forced into war. I know that you would wish me to voice in the name of the women of the British Empire our deep and abiding sympathy with those on whom the first cruel and shattering blows have fallen, the women of Poland. Nor do we forget the gallant womanhood of France, who are called on to share with us again the hardships and sorrows of war. War has at all times called for the fortitude of women. Even in other days, when it was an affair of the fighting forces only, wives and mothers at home suffered constant anxiety for their dear ones, and too often the misery of bereavement. Their lot was all the harder, because they felt that they could do so little beyond heartening through their own courage and devotion the men at the front. Now this is all changed, for we, no less than men, have real and vital work to do. To us also is given the proud privilege of serving our country in her hour of need. The call has come, and from my heart I thank you, the women of our great empire, for the way that you have answered it. The tasks that you have undertaken, whether at home or in distant lands, cover every field of national service. And I would like to pay my tribute to all of you who are giving such splendid and unselfish help in this time of trouble. At the same time, I do not forget the humbler part which so many of you have to play in these trying times. I know that it is not so difficult to do the big things, the novelty, the excitement of new and interesting duties, have an exhilaration of their own. But these tasks are not for every woman. It is the thousand and one worries and irritations in carrying on wartime life in ordinary homes which are often so hard to bear. Many of you have had to see your family life broken up, your husband going off to his allotted task, your children evacuated to places of greater safety. The King and I know what it means to be parted from our children, and we can sympathize with those of you who have bravely consented to this separation for the sake of your little ones. Equally do we appreciate the hospitality shown by those of you who have opened your homes to strangers and to children sent from places of special danger. All this, I know, has meant sacrifice. And I would say to those who are feeling the strain, 
be assured that in carrying on your home duties and meeting all these worries cheerfully, you are giving real service to the country. You are taking your part in keeping the home front, which will have dangers of its own, stable and strong. It is, after all, for our homes and for their security that we are fighting. And we must see to it that despite all the difficulty of these days, our homes do not lose those very qualities which make them the background as well as the joy of our lives. Women of all lands yearn for the day when it will be possible to set about building a new and better world where peace and goodwill shall abide. That day must come. Meantime, to all of you in every corner of the empire who are doing such fine work in all our services, or who are carrying on at home amidst the trials of these days, I would give a message of hope and encouragement. We have all a part to play, and I know you will not fail in yours remembering always that the greater your courage and devotion, the sooner shall we see again in our midst the happy, ordered life for which we long. Only when we have won through to an enduring peace shall we be free to work unhindered for the greater happiness and well-being of all mankind. We put our trust in God who is our refuge and strength in all times of trouble. I pray with all my heart that he may bless and guide and keep you always.